Have you ever pondered the mystery surrounding the Antichrist's identity and its role in eschatological theology? The Antichrist, a figure shrouded in enigma, has intrigued theologians, scholars and laymen alike for centuries. This concept, deeply rooted in religious texts and traditions, refers to an entity believed to appear in the end times. Often depicted as a false messiah, the Antichrist is said to deceive humanity, heralding a period of tribulation before the final judgment. The origins of the Antichrist concept can be traced back to biblical texts. The term itself, stemming from the Greek Antichristos, signifies against Christ or in place of Christ. It appears five times in the New Testament, specifically in the epistles of John. However, the Antichrist, as a figure of end times prophecy, is a construct that has evolved over time and its interpretation varies across different religious sects. For some, the Antichrist is a literal individual, a charismatic leader who will rise to power in the final days. Others interpret it as a symbolic representation of a system or a group that opposes Christ's teachings. Yet, there are those who view the Antichrist as an internal struggle within the human soul, a battle between good and evil. In eschatology, the study of the end times, the Antichrist plays a significant role. This entity is often seen as a catalyst, propelling humanity towards the climax of history, a period marked by chaos, persecution and spiritual deception. The Antichrist's arrival is viewed as a sign, a precursor to the ultimate triumph of good over evil, the return of Christ and the establishment of God's eternal kingdom. Throughout history, the Antichrist has been a source of fascination and fear, a symbol of the ultimate evil, yet it remains an enigma. Its true nature and identity are subject of ongoing debate and speculation. As we journey through this exploration, we aim to shed light on this complex and controversial figure, examining its role in eschatological theology through the lens of academic insights. So, let's delve into the earliest theories surrounding the Antichrist, taking us back to the days of early Christianity, in the early days of Christianity, the Antichrist concept was quite different from what many believe today. The term Antichrist itself, originating from the Greek Antichristos, was not initially associated with a single apocalyptic figure as we often see in contemporary interpretations. Instead, it was more broadly applied to denote opposition to Christ, often used as a metaphor for heresy or apostasy. During the formative years of Christianity, the Antichrist was seen as a concept rather than a person. It was a tool to describe those who denied Christ's teachings or those who preached a distorted version of them. The Antichrist was in essence a symbol of deceit and falsehood, a stark contrast to the truth and righteousness embodied by Christ. As Christianity spread and diversified, so too did the interpretations of the Antichrist. In the Middle Ages, a significant shift in thought occurred. The concept of the Antichrist began to take on a more literal and individualistic form. Theologians and scholars of the time started to depict the Antichrist as a real tangible figure, one who would rise to power and bring about a time of great tribulation before the end of days. Speculation ran rife about the identity of this feared figure. Some pointed fingers at contemporary political leaders, accusing them of being the Antichrist. Others saw the Antichrist in the actions and ideologies of opposing religious factions. The figure of the Antichrist became a powerful tool in religious and political discourse, used to denounce enemies and rally support. Yet despite the shift towards a more literal interpretation, the metaphorical use of the Antichrist did not disappear. Even in the Middle Ages, the term continued to be used as a symbol of heresy and apostasy, a reminder of the ongoing battle between truth and falsehood, between faith and deceit. Now let's leap forward to the time of the Reformation where views about the Antichrist took yet another turn. The Reformation, a time of great religious upheaval, brought with it a new perspective on the Antichrist. In this transformative period, the Antichrist was often associated with the papacy, a view that was particularly prevalent among the Protestant reformers. Figures like Martin Luther and John Calvin saw the Antichrist as a corrupt religious institution rather than an individual. They pointed to the perceived abuses and excesses of the Catholic Church as signs of the Antichrist's influence. However, this interpretation was not without its critics even within the Protestant movement. Some reformers, such as the Swiss theologian Heinrich Bullinger, argued for a more nuanced view. 
They contended that the Antichrist could be found not only in institutions, but also in individuals who opposed Christ's teachings. As we move forward in history, the image of the Antichrist evolves again. Contemporary interpretations often depict the Antichrist as a future world leader who will deceive humanity. This view, popularized by modern evangelical eschatology, sees the Antichrist as a charismatic figure who will rise to power in the end times, promising peace but ultimately leading the world into chaos and conflict. This shift in understanding reflects the broader changes in society and theology. As the world becomes more interconnected, the idea of a global leader who can influence all of humanity becomes more plausible. Similarly, as theology becomes more focused on individual responsibility and personal faith, the Antichrist is seen less as an institution and more as an individual who rejects God's truth. Yet despite these changes, the core idea remains the same. The Antichrist is a force of deception and opposition to Christ. Whether seen as a corrupt institution, a misguided leader, or a future world ruler, the Antichrist serves as a warning against complacency and a call to vigilance in the face of deception. As we've seen, the Antichrist concept has evolved significantly over the centuries, reflecting the changing times and theological perspectives. But what about the Antichrist's role in eschatology? Why is this figure so central to end times theology? The Antichrist represents a pivotal character in eschatological narratives. It's a figure of profound significance in the prophetic script of the world's ultimate fate. Essentially, the Antichrist is seen as the antagonist, the embodiment of all evil, who will rise to power before the final divine judgment. In Christian eschatology, the Antichrist is depicted as the one who will deceive many, leading the world into chaos and conflict. This deception and turmoil are often interpreted as the precursors to the final divine intervention and judgment. The Antichrist's role is vital because it places the context of good versus evil at the forefront of these end-time prophecies. It serves as a catalyst for the ultimate battle between righteousness and sin, a struggle that is believed to precede the ushering in of a new heaven and a new earth. As we conclude, let's summarize what we've learned about the intriguing figure of the Antichrist. The Antichrist, an enigmatic figure shrouded in mystery, has captivated theologians for centuries. From the early days of Christianity through the Middle Ages, the concept of the Antichrist has been a subject of intense scrutiny, evolving with each epoch to reflect the societal and religious concerns of the time. This figure, often seen as the embodiment of evil, has been interpreted in many ways, from a literal demonic entity to a metaphorical embodiment of moral decay. In the Reformation and modern times, these interpretations have further diversified, reflecting the complexities of our contemporary world. The Antichrist has also played a significant role in eschatology, the study of end times. This role is often viewed through a lens of both fear and fascination, serving as a beacon of what could potentially befall humanity in its final days. While the identity and nature of the Antichrist remain a puzzle, its role in eschatological theology continues to inspire debate and speculation, and perhaps that's part of its enduring allure.